So today we're going to talk about behavioral adaptations. What is an adaptation? Let's review very quickly. An adaptation can be physical or behavioral. Um, so it can be an actual physical characteristic or some torpo sort of behavior. Um, it helps an animal to survive or reproduce. Um, all animals are basically adapted to live in certain habitats, and they usually do well and survive and reproduce in those habitats. And an animal can, if an animal cannot adapt to its habitat, it will eventually die out. So again, remember, there's two types of adaptations. There's physical adaptations. Those are things like protective coloring, camouflage, chemical defenses, body parts or body structures, anything actually physical that the animal uses in order to survive and reproduce. And then today we're going to talk about behavioral adaptations. Behavioral adaptations are actions that an animal uses in order to survive or reproduce in its habitat. So what is a behavioral adaptation? Well, behavioral adaptations are animals' actions. So they're not physical body parts or physical colorings or anything physical. It's actually the actions of an animal that allow it to respond to life's needs. Um, each organism has unique methods of adapting to its environment by a means of different actions. So basically the actions of an animal or the behavior of an animal that helps it adapt and survive in its environment. We're going to talk about five different types of behavioral adaptations today. If you don't get these written down right now, don't worry because we're going to go through each one later. Um, they are migration, hibernation, estivation, torpor, and dormancy. So what is migration? Migration is the movement of an organism from one place to another when their survival depends on it, and it is usually seasonal. What that means, guys, is it's not, migration would not be like a pigeon crossing the road or it would not be an animal moving over from one field to another field because the second field looks like it's better it looks like it has more food migration usually involves moving long distances and it's required for that animal's survival so it's not really a choice the animal doesn't choose to move just because you know uh, you know the food looks better over on that side of the road it actually is a choice that is or it's actually something they have to do in order to survive and again, it's usually seasonal. A lot of times it has to do with winter. So when winter comes, an animal may migrate to a place that's warmer, um, that has a warmer climate, so that, number one, the animal can survive, and number two, it can find food sources. Why do animals migrate? There's a bunch of different reasons. Number one, to un avoid unfavorable environments. For instance, in the winter, um, it may get super cold. There may not be much food. Um, the environment just may not be favorable. Um, for food source purposes, again, if they run, are running out of food in a particular place, they may migrate to a new place where there's more food. Um, animals will migrate for mating purposes. For instance, salmon will return to their place of birth in order to mate um, and reproduce in that particular area. So salmon return to their breeding grounds. Other animals as well will return to their breeding grounds. I believe turtles actually will return to the beach where they are born and then go back there in order to mate. Um, so for mating purposes, and finally for weather purposes. Again, if it gets too cold in a particular area, um, the animals will migrate for the winter to a warmer area and then usually come back in the summer. How do animals know when to migrate? Well, there's different ways that they know. Number one, some animals can sense temperature changes and changes of season. And so if it starts to get cold over a longer period of time, they will migrate. Um, other animals near the equator where the weather doesn't change very much end up just basically having something inside of them that makes them restless. And as they get restless, they will end up moving to a new location um, in order and migrating to a new location. Um, other things, scarcity of food. So if an animal um, basically is running out of food, um, they often will migrate to other areas or new areas. Um, and also genetics. Some animals, quite honestly, scientists are not sure exactly why they do migrate. They know that they do, and they figure that there just must be some sort of genetic reason or some sort of genetic trigger that causes them to migrate. Again, that happens a lot in reproduction, um, when an animal suddenly returns back to its birthplace in order to reproduce. So how do animals navigate when they're migrating? So if you've got an animal and it's migrating hundreds, if not thousands of miles, how is it that the animal knows where it's going? Well, the animals use several things to migrate. First, they use landmarks. 
So a lot of times, many different types of birds, when they migrate north and south, will use the shape of the continent, um, the shape of the shoreline, and they'll use that as landmarks to t figure out where they're going. Other animals, believe it or not, will actually use star patterns. They'll migrate at night or, or they'll fly during the day and then at night stop and check out the different star patterns and use the stars for migration. Some animals actually are connected or able, able to sense the Earth's magnetic field. And so they actually use the Earth's magnetic field and they can tell which way is north and which way is south from the magnetic field and they'll use that to migrate. And other animals will actually use the position of the sun and where the sun's located out in the sky in order to figure out where to go and where to migrate. So different animals have different methods of figuring out how they're going to migrate or where they're headed. Um, but it's kind of interesting. That it's kind of complicated, too, the different um, techniques that they use. Now, guys, just to make sure you know, not all animals migrate. Again, it's only certain types of animals only certain animals that require migration for their survival or for reproduction. Um, but the ones that do, these are the methods they use. And here are some examples of animals migrate that migrate. You don't have to write them all down. I'm not going to read them all. But basically the African elephant, American buffalo, um, the blue shark, the bowhead whale, turtles, snow gooses, swordfish, tiger sharks, frogs, fruit bats, hammerhead sharks, um, manatees, salmon, nightingales, zebras, all of these different animals actually migrate. And it's just to name a few. So there's actually hundreds, if not thousands, of other animals that migrate as well. So next thing, what is torpor? Torpor is a type of hibernation. Um, it is basically a state of decreased physiological activity in an animal. Um, it usually re requires having reduced body temperature, a reduced metabolism rate. Um, torpor um, is used to allow animals to survive periods of reduced food availability. So torpor, guys, is a lot like hibernation, only it's a, it's a much more broad category. So for instance, you have animals that hibernate, which means in the winter, basically, their bodies don't shut down, but they slow down drastically so that they can survive the winter with no food. You have other animals that do something called estivating. That, that happens in the deserts in the summer where they actually will shut down their, not shut down their bodies, but slow down their metabolism, slow down their bodies so they can survive the heat with very little water. Though both of those categories, hibernation and estivation, would come underneath of an overall enveloping category called torpor. Okay. So torpor is when any animal basically decreases its body temperature, its metabolism, when any animal takes and slows down its body processes, we call it torpor. Okay. Um, that includes slowing, slowing down the heartbeat, um, slowing down the breathing rate, bringing the body temperature down, slowing down metabolism, um, slowing down the rate at which they urinate or stopping to urinate or, or having any feces at all. Um, so anytime an animal basically doesn't completely shut down, because that would be death, but slows down their body functions, we call that torpor. There are two kinds of torpor. There's long-term torpor. This can last from days to weeks to months. Okay? And this is where hibernation and estivation come in. And there's also something called daily torpor. And guys, I'm sorry, I don't know why there's a T on the other. That's a typo. It should just say torpor or not torport. Okay. Um, daily torpor is when an animal just during a particular time of the day actually reduces its activity to conserve energy or to conserve water. What animals do torpor? Well, long-term animals, basically any animal that hibernates or estivates is considered to have done torpor. torpor. Um, daily torpor, mice um, do daily torpor. They'll basically burrow into their um, little burrows um, uh, during the day in order to reduce um, their need for food. Um, bats um, during the day will basically go into caves and will hang upside down and go into a daily torpor. Um, they'll bring their body temperature down, they'll bring their heart rate down, their breathing down so that they can save energy. Marsupials and hummingbirds also all do daily torpor. Well, what is hibernation? Hibernation is an inactive state resembling a deep sleep in which certain animals living in cold climates pass the winter. In hibernation, the body temperature is lowered, the breathing rate comes down and lowers, um, and the heart rate comes down and lowers, 
Um, hibernation protects the animals from the cold. It reduces their need for food um, during a season when food is pretty scarce. So hibernation is basically when an animal in the winter brings down all of its bodily functions, slows them down, breathing, heart rate, metabolism, temperature, almost down to nothing. Okay? Um, and then that allows them to survive the winter on the fat storage that they have from having eaten all the way through the spring. Do all animals hibernate or do or in the same way? No. Some animals will hibernate the entire winter and no matter what you do, you can't wake them up. So basically they will go in usually into a den or a cave when winter starts. Over the summer and the spring, they ate a whole bunch of food, built up a whole bunch of fat reserves, and they will basically hibernate all winter long um, and you, you can't wake them up no matter how hard you try. Certain types of bears are this way. Um, other animals, though, will hibernate the whole winter, but if you go in and you, you push them around a little bit, they will wake up. Okay? There are other types of bears that are this way, where actually they will hibernate, but if you go and you kind of shake them, or if they hear a real loud noise, they'll start to awaken. Other animals will hibernate for shorter periods, the, then they wake up, they eat the food that they've stored, and then they hibernate again. Squirrels usually do this quite a bit. They will store a whole bunch of food in their dens for the winter. They will go and hibernate for a period of a week or two weeks. Um, their bodies will use up all of the fat reserves that they saved up from when they ate before. Then they'll wake up, eat some of the food in their den so that they can build up fat reserves again, and then go back into hibernation for another period of a week to two weeks. So some animals will hibernate all the way through the winter. Others will wake up periodically and eat. Um, some will wake up and urinate and defecate and eat. Others will go through the whole winter without doing any of that. It just kind of depends on the animal. So what are some animals that hibernate? Bats, squirrels, bears, frogs, hedgehogs, dormice, woodchucks, snails, snakes, and box turtles, just to name a few, are animals that hibernate. What is estivation? Next one. Estivation is like hibernation, only it happens in hot climates. So hibernation happens when animals are cold and they reduce their body metabolism and their heart rate and their breathing rate in the cold. Estivation is when an animal reduces its heart rate and its breathing and its metabolism in hot climates. Um, basically, the animals will go dormant, usually in a den. Um, the, this protects the animal from heat and it allows it to conserve water until the winter time comes and it can find more water. Um, their metabolism slows down greatly to the point where sometimes guys, they only breathe like once every six minutes or the heartbeat will only beat once every couple minutes, okay, or a couple times a minute. Um, these animals usually can be awakened much more quickly than hibernating animals. Um, estivation is not as common as hibernation. More animals actually hibernate than the ones that do that estivate. Um, and mostly estivation happens with reptiles or different kinds of desert animals. Although the first estivating mammal was actually found in 2004. And it is the Madagascan fat-tailed dwarf lemur. Um, so they have found a mammal that does estivate, but it took them until 2004 to do it. So mostly estivation happens with reptiles. Again, it's a way to save and conserve water. Um, here are some animals that estivate. Salamanders, lizards, turtles and tortoises, frogs and toads, snails, land crabs, bees, earthworms, and of course that Madagascan lemur that they found in 2004. What is dormancy? Dormancy is basically hibernation or estivation, but it's for plants. So when we're talking about dormancy, we're talking about plants. Um, during dormancy, the plant will stop growing. That doesn't mean it dies. It just means it quits growing bigger, okay, and it quits getting more leaves. Um, for a period of time, to, in order to conserve its resources, um, its water and its food and its sugars, um, and to avoid adverse growing conditions. Some plants drop their leaves in the winter to conserve energy. This would consider, be considered to be dormancy. Also, guys, some grasses, you'll notice, will go um, dormant in the uh, summer due to hot heat, or some actually go dormant even in the winter due to the cold. Um, if you've ever seen a lawn, it looks like it's completely dead. The grass is completely brown during the winter, and then all of a sudden in the spring and the summer, boom, it starts going, growing green again. 
that grass has basically gone dormant over the summer, or sorry, over the winter, and now that spring and summer have hit, it turns green again and starts growing again. So dormancy is with plants, and it's when a plant basically sheds its leaves and stops growing for a period of time.